Hi everyone, this is Unit 8B, Lesson 8A, Day 3, and Lesson 8C. This is going to still continue to deal with writing equations of lines. For today, we have two objectives. I can create and manipulate a linear equation in point-slope form, and I can create equations of horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, so in order to get started with what we need to today, we have a couple things we want to take a look at. First, we have these items that we want to recall. Remember, your slope-intercept form is always in the form y equals mx plus b. You are going to be required to eventually get your equation into that form. The second thing we want to keep in mind is our slope formula. So make sure you guys have that one down too. m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. For today's lesson, we're going to need some key terms. You are now going to have another formula to help you write the equations of lines. So we've already gone through writing them in slope-intercept form. Your one you're going to work with today is called point-slope form. You do need to make sure you know the difference between these two types. The main thing we want to take a look at is our point-slope form formula. So we have y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. Now, when we're going through and deciding which formula we want to use, an important thing to remember is with point-slope formula, we want to use this version if we are given a point and if we are given a slope. Now, when we put things into point-slope form, we want to make sure that we are looking at our original equation. We have y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. What you want to keep in mind is since we have that subtraction there, another way we may want to think about it is using the opposite of our x and y values that we are given. So maybe fill that in. We're going to want to use the opposite sign of our x and y values. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to take a look at our first example. We want to write the equation of the line in point-slope form, given the point and the slope. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. So what we have for part A, we are given that we have a slope of 5, and we're given the point 1, negative 3. The first thing I want you guys to do is go ahead and label your point. So we have x and we have y. That's always going to help us out with these equations. The second thing I want you guys to do is write down, well, what is the equation for point-slope form? So we have y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. Now what we want to do is we want to fill in our information that we know. Well, in this case, we are given that our slope here is positive 5. So when it comes to writing our equation, right away we can start by filling in our m value as positive 5. What we also know is we know our x and our y value. If you look at this equation, what we have is we have two y's and we have two x's. The unique thing about point-slope form is your first y is always going to stay y, and your first x in your parentheses is always going to stay x. Now, all we have to worry about is filling in our x and our y value. Now, remember what I told you guys. We want to think about taking the opposite value. So in this case, my x is a positive 1. When I go ahead and when I fill that in my parentheses, we normally have x minus x1. Since we have a positive 1 here, when I write it in parentheses, I'm going to write x minus 1. Again, think of it as the opposite sign. If you were to actually cover up the x and the subtraction sign, that's where your 1 would come into play. Then if we take a look, we still have to fill in our y value. So my y value here is negative 3. So when it comes to filling in our y value, what we want to do is we have a negative 3, so we want the opposite. So we're going to go ahead and write a positive 3. Since it says to leave the equation of the line in point-slope form, this is our final answer. y plus 3 equals 5 times the quantity x minus 1. So really, when it's asking you for point-slope form, it's as simple as knowing your formula and plugging those in. So let's take a look at our next one. Once again, I'm going to start by, I'm going to write out my formula. So y minus y1 equals m times the quantity of x minus x1. The next thing I'm going to make sure I do is label my point, my x and my y. 
M is already labeled for me. So I'm going to go ahead and start the same way. My M value is a positive one half. So when I go to my equation, I'm going to fill in my M value of one half. I can also make sure I fill in my first Y and my first X because we know those are not going to change. And now we can take a look at our X and our Y values. My X value is a negative two. Remember your X value goes in those parentheses. So instead of using negative two, I'm going to want to add two. And my Y value is a positive four, but instead of adding four, I'm going to subtract four. So here is my final equation. Again, make sure you are using the opposite. If you wanted to think of it this way, we would have y minus 4, x minus our negative 2, which is why we end up with that positive, why we end up using the opposite. Okay, so go ahead and flip the page. If you take a look at our next examples, we now want to make sure we write the equation in slope-intercept form, given the point and the slope. So what we're going to do here, now, you guys saw in your last video that we can go ahead and write it in slope-intercept form right away given the point and the slope. The way we're going to work with it today is we are going to first put it into point-slope form, and then from there we're going to go ahead and get it into slope-intercept form. So we're going to have two steps. Our first one is to put it into point-slope. Our second one is to put it into slope-intercept. So this way will always work too if you need to go ahead and write the equation given a point and a slope. So let's take a look. We have m equals 1 and we're given the point 13, negative 2. So go ahead and label out your x and your y value. I'm going to rewrite my slope formula. So y minus y1 equals m, m times the quantity x minus x1 and fill in my information. Well, my first y stays the same. My y value is negative 2, so I'm going to add 2. My m value is a positive 1. And then my x value is a positive 13, so I'm going to subtract 13. Up to this point, this is nothing different from what we've done on the first page. What you do want to look at now, though, is we want to get all the way to slope-intercept form. To get to slope-intercept form, remember, that means we want y by itself. That's y equals mx plus b. So to get y by itself, our first step is going to be to go through and distribute. So on my left-hand side, my y plus 2 stays there. 1 times x gives me x. 1 times negative 13 just gives me a negative 13. To continue to get y by itself, we need to go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. Make sure when you do this, you are lining it up with your number, not with your x term. Finally, on our left-hand side, we have y equals, my x stays the same, I have no terms to combine that with, negative 13 plus a negative 2 gives me a negative 15. So for my final answer of having that equation in slope-intercept form, it would be y equals x minus 15. And if you look, that is in the form of y equals mx plus b. So let's go ahead and take a look at part B then. We're going to go ahead and start it out the same way. We're going to start by setting up our point slope formula. So y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. What we go ahead and worry about is we leave our first y the same. We go ahead and plug in our m value, which is 1 fourth. We leave our first x the same. Now, make sure you label those x and y values if you haven't done so already. y is a negative 3, so I'm going to add 3. x is a negative 8, so I'm going to add 8. Here we are in point slope form, but we want to go all the way to slope intercept form, remember? So we now need to get y all by itself. So we go ahead, rewrite what we have on the left-hand side, and we need to distribute. 1 fourth times x is 1 fourth x. 1 fourth times 8 is a positive 2. My last step to get y by itself is to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. Again, watch how you are lining that up. On the left, we're left with y. My 1 fourth x, that goes ahead and stays the same. And then 2 plus a negative 3 gives me a negative 1. So for my final answer in slope-intercept form, we have y equals 1 fourth x minus 1. 
So not too bad. We just take that point slope form and then we go ahead and make sure we distribute and solve for y. Get y all by itself. Okay, if we go ahead and take a look at our next part of our note sheet, this is where we're going to cover 8c. You're also going to have to write the equations of your horizontal and your vertical lines. So we got to remember a couple things. First of all, for a horizontal line, you have a slope of, I hope you guys were all thinking zero. You have a slope of zero. We've been working with this for a long time now. When we want to write the equation of a horizontal line, we're always going to end up with y equals a number. That's what our equation is going to look like. We will not be in y equals mx plus b form. We will not be in point slope form. We will not be in standard form. Just y equals a number. For our vertical line, our slope is undefined. You guys already know this information. And the difference with a vertical line is now we are always going to have x equals a number. That's what our equation is going to look like. So if we take a look at our next three examples, we want to write the equation of each line and sketch its graph. So your first step is going to be to go through and look at your slope. So if we look here, my slope is 0. If we have a slope of 0, we know it's going to be a horizontal line. If it's a horizontal line, we know that we are going to have y equals a number. Now, the nice thing with these equations is it doesn't require that much work. If we know it's going to be y equals a number, that means they're telling me what y has to be. Well, given the point, my y value here is 2. With my y value being 2, we can list that out as x and y. They're telling me y has to equal 2. So y is going to equal 2. That's my equation. Lastly, it wants us to sketch its graph. So we want to plot the point 4, 2. So I go to the right 4, and I go up 2. And then, like we said already, it's a horizontal line. So we want to make sure that we go through and we fill in that horizontal line. And make sure your line, of course, as always, has your arrows on the end of it. So not too bad. Looking at our next one, now our slope is undefined. So we have our x and our y value. They gave us that. If your slope is undefined, that should re help you remember that we have a vertical line. Knowing we have a vertical line, we know it's going to be x equals a number. Once again, if they're giving us the point 4, negative 5, they're telling us x has to be 4. So our equation is just x equals 4. Lastly, we want to sketch the graph. So we have the point 4, negative 5. So make sure we go down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since we know we're going to have a vertical line, we want to make sure we fill in that line there. So make sure you guys go through and do that. Make sure, again, you have the arrows on that graph. Okay, and now if we take a look at our last example, this time we're given two points, okay? So recall, that's where we're going to have to use that slope formula to figure out what our slope is. We have x1, y1, x2, y2. Remember, in our numerator, we take y2 minus y1, so we'll have 3 minus 3, over x2 minus x1, so over 4 minus 3. When we simplify, we get 0 over 1 which tells me that my slope is 0. Knowing that your slope is 0, right away you should think to yourself, okay, my slope is 0, so I'm going to have a horizontal line. If we have a horizontal line, we know our equation is going to be x equals a number. Well, looking at this, we have, I'm sorry, we know our, it's going to be y equals a number. My fault there, y equals a number. So since we know it's going to be y equals a number, if we look at both of our points, we have the same y value in each of them. So here we go. My equation of my line is going to be y equals 3. And then we want to make sure we go ahead and plot those points. So we have the point 3, 3. And we have the point 4, 3. And as you can tell, if you're going to go through and you're going to connect those dots, we need it to be a horizontal line. And then don't forget to add in your arrows there if you haven't already. 
Okay, those next you tries we're going to go ahead and skip. You guys are going to do those in class. Just make sure, as always, that you fill out after watching this video what can you do, what you still not know how to do, and what are you going to do to help yourself.